gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Block Sauce Gaming Edition, where we bring you the juiciest discussions in the world of gaming and Web3 culture. I'm your host and re-NFT ambassador, Jim Kieran, and today we've got an incredible guest lined up for you. So grab your controllers, crack open a Mountain Dew, and prepare to get your game on. Receiving priority transmission. One small step for a man, one giant leap into the metaverse. This is Delta 4, air support is in mouth. Hey there, sauce enthusiasts. It's time to bring the heat with another electrifying episode of The Block Sauce. I'm thrilled to introduce our special guests. We have Vincent, uh, the CEO, and we also have in the background, you'll, you'll hear his voice. We got Mr. Console, uh, the marketing manager for Astromust. How are you guys doing today? Uh, we're doing good. Uh, very busy, busy building, building games. <laughs> it's the life, though. Uh, so I do have a little bit of familiarity with Astro Must. I played the original game, uh, I think it was last year. And I'm kind of curious about the, the company and what got you guys to this point. Like what brought you into gaming and then, you know, why Web3? Okay, so I think for the gaming it's going to be very easy. So uh, essentially all my life, I mean, yeah, I, I have a severe game addiction for, for a long time. <laughs> And uh, that uh, went to the point that it was a problem uh, with my wife, you know, because oh. we had babies at the time. And obviously, I need to care of the babies, but I wanted to find time to play. And there was a bit of a conflict there and to and work as well. So basically, my wife one day turned out, uh, turned up and say, hey, since you love gaming so much, why don't you make uh, make your job out of it? Because at least you, you'll be able to feed those two at least together. <laughs> And um, and then uh, what I did, so I, back then I used to work with Google Maps as a photographer for the Street View. And uh, I uh, already uh, was uh, dabbling into web design and coding mm -hmm. websites and stuff. So I started to take some uh, some courses to start to learn how to make games on Unity. And then from there, I started to build small games, which I started to really enjoy. And uh, essentially, uh, I kept that literally on the side. I really I didn't do it in my, my life as such. But what happened is that when the, the, bull, the bull run came up, um, at the time, I also had uh, made a good friend, which is the founder of SwissBorg, a uh, very successful uh, uh, exchange in Europe. And essentially, he was like, Vincent, if that's your passion, if that's what you want to do, the bull run right now is the, the best moment because you're able to to really blow up and even raise funds and all of that is their best time. So it was like, you know what? Quit what you're doing now, quit your job, go full time, don't no plan B and uh, I have your back essentially. And then, uh, so that's what exactly what I did. That was a year and a half ago. And since then uh, in total, we raised a half a million dollar. Uh, we, we've been working very hard and essentially that, that was really the start of, of the journey. That is, I mean, Everybody loves games. Let's be honest. I love games. That's why I'm here. Uh, so that, that I mean, makes sense to me. But what, outside of obviously, you know, your friend telling you and we had the bear, uh, the bull run and everything, was there any other appeal to Web3? Like, where did Web3 gaming kind of make yeah. sense to you? That's interesting. So essentially, the um, 
that actually brings me back to the type of game I was trying to build. So he was he was the idea. So originally, mm-hmm. I was uh, I'm I'm also very passionate about space. Uh, in university, I studied astrophysics, for example. And uh, I was, when I started building my game, I wanted to be an astronaut. And actually, I was really uh, looking at what SpaceX were doing. And uh, basically, you do, today the, the name of the game is uh, Astro Must, but the original name of the game is Elon Must. <laughs> so you you get you, you understand yeah. better the the idea. So essentially. Uh, I, so I was creating a game where you were playing a character pretty much like Elon Musk, and then you build a car, you build a rocket, you you know like 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 with Tesla and stuff. So I wanted to create a racing game uh, with the cars that I was making. And back then, when I was speaking with some devs, they were telling me, Vincent, you can't build a game with essentially the survival crafting game, and at the same time have a uh, a proper racing game because it's two different games, two different engines. You can't merge them together as such. Uh, so I got stuck there and I didn't progress that much. But when uh, the Web3, uh, this idea of Web3 came up, it was because of this concept of interoperability. The idea that now you can connect games together with the mm-hmm. assets and all that. And I was like, bing, bingo, this is exactly what I need to enhance this game experience where you can have those assets moving from one game to another. And this is exactly how the Web3 came into the picture. I'm glad you brought up interoperability. A lot of people, they, they call me crazy, right? They're like, oh, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. It's been happening. It's already happening inside of Web2. It's just it's closed ecosystems. I can only carry my my StarCraft asset between other Blizzard games, right? Like if I pre-order exactly. StarCraft uh, Collector's Edition, then I get goodies in Diablo and World of Warcraft, maybe Call of Duty one of these days, who knows? But it's all enclosed to Blizzard and Activision's ecosystem. Web3 brings us the opportunity, if I wanna use my astronaut NFT in another game and they support it, yeah. it's there. Now, you're That's- obviously not going to see the exact astronaut carryover, but it, it'll show up in some form or fashion, be it a skin actually, or access. Actually, I can surprise you already. Uh, if you want, that's, that's uh, basically our NFT skins that we have been uh, making. And uh, we actually sold out one of the, fir- the first collection of that sort uh, like uh, a couple of weeks back. Essentially, uh, when we do an NFT, there's a 3D file attached to it. Oh. And that 3D file, it's a uh, it's uh, it's a file that can be uh, originally is an F uh, sorry it's called um, a GLB file, but it can be mm. transferred into an FBX, a, G- a GLTF file, and so, stuff like that auto- very easily with the rig and everything. And uh, so our our NFTs are obviously compatible with all our game ecosystem, but it's also compatible with all game engines. And uh, I did a test. I was able to import my avatar into Spatial, which is a metaverse mm-hmm. platform. Yep. And now I go around all over Spatial with my with my NFT. That is actually really neat, but at the same time, like it, it's going to be kind of limited on how games can use it, right? Because your guys is a bit more uh, I don't want to say pixelated because that's not really the 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 word for it. Um, uh, it's low poly. Low poly, thank you. Uh, so you guys are a bit more low poly. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to see like an Astro Must character inside of like Dead Drop, for example, because that game's very crisp, smooth. But other low poly games, it would be a great fit for. So mm. I, I think that that is a great way of doing it. And I am 100% glad that you guys are going that, that route because that's actually been one of my complaints as a gamer about ownership is, well, I don't have access to the model. Really, I just own the NFT. I own a receipt that says I own this asset. But at the end of the day, usually the asset is sitting on a centralized server somewhere and I can't do anything with it. And it's like, yeah. I, do I really own it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So but I, uh, the, the, the thing is that it's compatible with everything. It's, mm-hmm. it's just not going to match with the art style. But that's Exactly. It. Exactly, 100%. And and that's why I think it's going to be up to other game projects getting creative or collaborating with similar graphic games. Uh, Because like like you said, uh, it probably, it's low poly, so it wouldn't really fit in Dead Drop. But I could see this skin in a game like, uh, what was that one? Uh, It was originally called No Way Back. I think it was called No Way Back, but they, they changed the name, if I remember correctly, on Elixir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's lot. I mean, there's a lot of games uh, that, that that potentially can fit. But um, mm-hmm. 
But the thing is that uh, the, in, in our games, although they are low poly in art style, the engine itself is absolutely not low poly. It's like a regular engine. So yep. they, they, I've been discussing like recently with other NFT uh, communities, which have very high poly uh, characters. And uh, we're actually making a way for them to be able to come in our game. So we kind of going past the fact that it doesn't fit our style. We're going to allow other characters to come mm -hmm. in and out, for example. Well, I mean, there is still a way for other games to do it, even though it is low poly versus their high poly. I mean, Fortnite is a great example of that. You have characters from all different worlds, all different dimensions. It, That's my point. That was TV my point. shows, everything. Exactly. Yeah, and, that was my point. And all they really did was kind of make them cartoony, right? They did exactly. have to adjust the art style a bit, but mm -hmm. the fact that you've already given the models, the rigs, and everything, realistically, all they got to do is go in, add some more polys, and reapply textures. If they want to, yeah. yeah. And so, probably uh, that, that could be automated as well. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know, but yeah, it could be to it to some extent. Yeah, so I, I think there's a lot of room in there, and you guys are one of the first. I say one of because I know one other project that gave me access to the files, but they're not a game. They are a true metaverse project. So not, you're the first game I know giving me access <laughs> to my assets. So that's really cool. Um, that awesome. being said, I do know that you guys have two games. you got the mobile game Astro Must, and now you guys have released a game on Elixir called Astro Royale. Is yes. the plan to continue supporting both, or did you guys kind of shift direction to focus on the BR? Like, what what's going so on? So this is it? this is interesting. So we're going back to what Astromus is. You remember mm -hmm. that vision with like uh, you race, you build, you do everything. So the Astromus actually is not a game as such. It's going to be an ecosystem of games, and uh, more specifically, mm -hmm. we've refined the concept a bit further. We're going to be a uh, ecosystem of game of multi genre. So that's very key for us. So the idea is that we're going to create games of every kind, and we're going to link them, link them in uh, three or four ways. So first is going to be the storyline. So all the games will fit within one overall story. Mm -hmm. For example, the battle royale is, let's say, the training ground of, the, of those early astronauts. You know, they they are, they're not like uh, advanced. You you actually this guy behind me is called a recruit. So essentially, you are start as a recruit and you go into that training battle royale stuff. So it, it fits within the training, let's say, of the character. And, and then you can have the character go into another game, which is like the main RPG where the storyline goes forward, etc. cetera. And, um, and essentially, we're going to create like an ecosystem. So the idea is that the both games, are, I mean, the game is on the App Store at the moment. Uh, it's it's literally just a demo, but it's the the it's the start of the RPG. Mm -hmm. So it's the uh, that's the game that we are working on the most now because we are uh, pre preparing a a, a, re a new release an update uh, very soon, and uh, so essentially that's going to be the kind of the mother game which will nest all the other game in because like it's got the storyline mm -hmm. and uh, let's say the racing game, the shooter game, whatever you find, even arcade game, they all will fit within that mother game as such. And, uh, and, and yeah, so all the games will be there and we, we, uh, we're going to continue expanding and expanding. So the, for example, if you want to know in the roadmap quick, briefly, we're going to have released the update of the RPG on the app store. We, we, and we also always going to have a mobile and PC version as well. And then the battle royale that we're going to play in a minute, it's it's going to actually uh, be added, plugged in to the uh, to the game, which is the uh, RPG, so that they they can be working together. For example, you'll be able to build a gun in the I mean, craft a gun in the crafting game and export it to the battle royale, for example. Which kind of answered my next question, which was, are these games going to tie together? And apparently, they are. So yeah, so. They they, I just wanted to mention this. So they tied up with the uh, storyline. They tied up with the progression. They tied up with the shareability of items. And even more interestingly, they, they tied up with the currency, which is a token. Okay. So right now I do understand that they're completely separate downloads, but eventually you want to tie them in to where it's just one download and I kind of just walk through the world to get to the different game modes? <laughs> no, no, not even like that. They're actually different games. Oh, okay. So so you, let's say you into a shooter. If you're a guy that just love a shooter like uh, like shoot like battle royale, you're just going mm -hmm. to play uh, uh, the the battle royale. So it's kind of a, yeah. it will look more like. Uh, have you ever played Roblox? I have, unfortunately. So ro on Roblox, essentially, you have like a main uh, loader. You got to list all the games. Yeah. And then you can just switch from one game to the next. 
But in our case, when you switch to one game to the next, it will remember your progression, your item, your inventory, things like that. Okay, so it, it's more like it, it, you have a centralized menu and you choose which game you want to enter from there, but progress and content and everything shared across all the ecosystem. Yes. And actually, I can add maybe one more tiny thing uh, in terms of the deployment. We're thinking about the best way to deploy uh, this, especially on mobile. That's how we're thinking about it. So for now, on mobile, there is um, there's two aspects. Uh, for example, on one hand, we want a centralized app which, which nests all the games. So you essentially download the main app, you select the game you want, it will download that specific game onto your phone, and you can have multiples. Or we, we're also thinking of having those games uh, separate, uh, uh, downloadable separately without the, the main uh, framework. And essentially, be, the, the only reason why that could be interesting, we don't know yet if we'll do it, but it could be interesting because we have, uh, from our data, it looks like some players, uh, when they search for games, they go for, let's say, they play, they put shooter games and they, they just look through that. They won't, they won't necessarily look for uh, a generalized app that uh, has many games, let's say. And but uh, because on the back end we can connect all the servers, doesn't matter from where you're entering in the game, you still connect to the same server and all of the back end system. And then if the people want to experience the full Astromas ecosystem, then they can go ahead and download the full uh, package, in, the, in which case they can de delete the first app. Yeah, I think the second route where each app is its own download might be better for you just because of Apple and the way that they treat their ecosystem. Um, that was kind of the big De detrimental factor for game pass being on iphone was every single game had to be its own separate app and xbox was like no like that's too much dev too much work no not even happening so i, I feel like if you kind of went that netflix -ish route where you just hey you download this app and then it gives you all these other apps to download you're probably yeah. going to hit a wall or have to pay a lot of money in the apple ecosystem i think it would work great on google though uh, actually they, they, strangely enough there's a hybrid version uh, there is a system where you can have an app that reference other apps. So you can have literally a main app with all the apps there. But then when you click on the game, it takes you back to the app store, asks you to download that specific mm -hmm. game. So it just centralizes the apps within a one, one kind ah, of game. And, then, okay. and, there, and uh, if you want to, an example of that on the app store, uh, there's a, a platform called uh, Ovio, O-V-I-O. And they do precisely that, but they do that with any game. So my game is listed on OVO, for example. But when you click mm -hmm. on it, it takes you back to the app store to download my game. That's actually kind of neat. Well, that's that's all on the mobile side, though, which we're not going to be looking at today. We're actually going to be checking out the Astro Royale, which is available on the Elixir launcher right now. If you don't have Elixir, you should probably go download that. Um, but yeah, it is code only, unfortunately. Uh, when, speaking of, in fact, now, because I always like to, you know, tell people what they can do to get into the game right now and stuff like that. Obviously, since it's closed access, if somebody wanted to play right now, what would they need to do? It's incredibly easy. First, step one, go to uh, Elixir, download the uh, Elixir launcher, mm -hmm. uh, sign in, get your account. Uh, once you have that on your, installed on your uh, PC, all you have to do is to go to our website on the straight away at the top, you'll see get a free beta code, which you just uh, fill a form. It will give you a free beta code that we have a limited uh, a beta code for now. I mean, it's limited, but we can add more if yeah. it finishes. And then uh, and essentially uh, on the on the launcher, there's a place where he says my uh, like a little place where it's written my account and then you can activate a game uh, from there. Uh, you click on game, paste the code, click activate game, and then it will show in your library as if uh, as your selection of game that you already have. And from there, you can just click install and you can play straight away. Voila, easy. And that's what Voila. they did. They hooked me up with the code. So we're going to switch over to the game real quick. Whoop. Boom. All right. So let me share my screen with you real quick. I usually do that, but I forgot to. So that way you can see what I am working with. Right. Vince, do you mind going ahead and creating the server for us? Yeah, I can. I can. I can create it already if you want. Okay, I'm creating one right now. I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put it on the on the auto. Uh, and then, and then actually um, it would have been interesting for you for you to see the creation of game because we put two game modes. 
I mean, no, two type of maps. Uh, uh, one of the two maps is pre-designed, and the other type of maps. Uh, if you click on, um, okay, let me let me tell you. Uh, come out of there, click create game. Yep. And this is I want to show you the purple maps that you see over there in the selection. They are uh, auto-generated maps. So it means that every time you play, every time you launch create, it actually creates the map right there and then. Oh, every wow. time. It's different every single time. Which means that as a shooter game, you can play maps that nobody can pre-learn. And the <laughs> map that you see on the bottom right is one that is actually pre-designed. Yeah, that's the Astro City. Okay, so yeah, Ashraya, go ahead. Just create, uh, you can create either a randomly generated map or the Astro City. Choose your pick. I want to see... I'm just gonna call it test. I want to see the. Uh, let's see, we got elimination. Oh, you guys got three game modes right now. Yeah. Let's see max players. Uh, Doesn't let you create. Oh, because you change the setting of the. Don't change the setting of the uh, auto generated maps. So you, the generated maps have pre have presets. So when you click it, uh, click like for example the first one. It doesn't let you. Oh, that's odd. And the bottom one either. Oh, you have the create dis deactivated. I don't know why. Okay, put the name there. Oh, because the name is missing. Go ahead. Put well, I name. had a name in there. Oh, it doesn't let you. Oh, that's strange. Let me try to do it on my side. So I'm going to create a randomly generated map. Okay. Okay, come out and uh, click on... Uh, click on uh, auto. I uh, know. Come out and come back because it, it refreshes every time you come in and out. Okay. Let's see. Do, do, now do. on auto, you will see it. Uh, let me see which uh, country I, he put me in because sometimes he just does that. Uh, one sec. I'm going to tell you. I am in Asia. Sorry. Go to Asia. All right. There we go. So basically, the the auto the, the auto just sent me to a specific place essentially. All right. So this map just been uh, just been generated just now. Where are you based, by the way? I you come out in in real world. <laughs> nice. Okay. So if you press X, you can fly, and oh. you press X and you jump. Press X and jump, you can fly. Is there a limit on that? Uh, the jetpack, yes. You go, on the right, you can see a little jetpack, like uh, red. Uh, that's your, that's your, uh, how much you have. And then you can ah, find, okay. you can open boxes and find refuel. Yep, just found some noise. Yeah, and we've got the <laughs> army joining shortly. It's always fun. Ooh, I can see some people joining. We're already four of us in there. <laughs> Nice. Army is coming for you, Dinkirin. I told them we can't let down the interview. <laughs> I mean, I'm there's, not even 100% sure what I'm doing just yet. There's sniper guns. There's all type of different guns in there. Okay, I'm going to start looking for players around. Ooh, I can see some people killing themselves already. I guess that's console. Oh, fall damage. Got to be careful with fall damage. Yeah. Shooting me already. Damn. Uh, I can't open chests oh. anymore, apparently? Oh, I'm already shooting someone. I don't know who I'm shooting. Oh, console killed me! Wow. Yeah, if the box is red, you oh! can... Oh! I got a console! <laughs> <laughs> so the box is red you what? Are, you are pretending to be a newbie. I'm here explaining the game and you shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you shot me first. I just turned and returned fire. Right. I was saying when the box is red, that means you have to give it a little bit of time for it to then be able to reopen. Ah. And to give you a little bit of context about our game, the Astro Royale, which is truly my joy because we play almost every evening in the community. We released this late in April. So far, we've had uh, can't count the amount of game nights, but around eighteen communities joining us just for fun, right? Nice. Despite being in private beta, that means for you to play the game, you need a code. 
we have ranked in the top 10 several times. That's a little bit of alpha. The sniper is a little uh, snipey. <laughs> Very powerful, the sniper. Hitting people with it's the hard part. If you go for a headshot with it, it's an automatic kill. Where are you? Where are you gone? I am trying to find the people. Alright. I'm near the big tower in the middle. Oh! <laughs> I killed Link and then I got sniped by the console. That's not, uh, console is really becoming good at this. I am. I don't even know where you shot me night. from. I don't know who I'm shooting there. I'm shooting everybody. So how many I'm different weapons are people. there? I've, I've seen at least three so far. Uh, in total, there is one, two, three, and a fourth. But it's not on. It's not. It's not in this map. But we have like a. A minigun. Ooh. That really like if you if we go to the other map, the city map, then we can get we can get the minigun. And speaking about guns, we just concluded uh draw your gun contest, right? We all speak about oh we have to be community centric and Oh I got with the sniper. <laughs> yeah, Lake Kim is dangerous. Well and... I went in with the pistol, so <laughs> Pistol versus sniper, usually a little one sided. Yeah. So we just concluded a draw your gun contest where uh -huh. the community was encouraged to come up with a funky, crazy design that we will have in the game. And currently we are concluding the top three winners. And we want to keep this initiative going where the community get to create the asset because we believe community is everything in Web3. Actually, I mean, to add to this, uh, all the guns that we have right now in the game, they all have been designed by the community without exception. Oh, nice. All of them. So, Jim Kieran, if you're feeling funky one day, you can take part in the creative contest. And when you're hanging out with your friends in the game, you can, you know what? I made that gun. You can have that somewhat street cred, which I think we all, as gamers, really wish to have. Maybe. I I do... I do like to, uh, create things. Woo! Oh, you hear it? <laughs> Killed me! I got lucky! All I had was a pistol and a dream! Uh, I should probably figure out buttons. Okay, so now I found grenades. Yeah. To throw a grenade, you click the number four. I guess we have... Is it two types or three types? Uh, there's three types of grenade in total. I was about to say, I've seen two so far, so that's good. Small grenade, small grenade flash grenade, and regular grenade. It says it's a pistol. There's a big uh, fight going on here. Yeah, I saw somebody getting shot at. And it wasn't me for once. Just trying to find <laughs> Mr. Console right now. Console, where are you hiding? <laughs> you he's, got, he's got a technique, Kelly. I've become a camper. Somebody be camping. Somebody's camping in Proof's console. Also, where are you camping? There's someone in front of me. I have a feeling it's you, Dinko. It probably is. Oh, what? Oh, you got what? me through the wall on my screen. <laughs> well, to be fair, we're playing on an Asia server, so for me, that's probably a decent ping. Thank you for the gun. You mean the same gun that you were using on me? I just picked it up. Oh! 
Billy Kim killed me. Woo! <laughs> so many shots. I missed so many shots. You killed me with the pistol. You're good at this. Right, if he kills you with a pistol, yeah, that says a lot. I mean, it, it was a pistol that I had to reload and I spray and prayed. It was luck. Oh, shoot! Somebody's shooting me from somewhere. Oh, you're above! <laughs> now, could you imagine if the map and when the map has more than 10 players? It's oh, just man. ecstatic. Well, I hit somebody. This is actually pretty fun. I'm not really into BRs, but this is this is interesting. I like the automated, uh, the automatically generated maps for sure. Like, and that's the first uh, edition. That's the really like the basic version. Are we gonna be able to make it way more interesting later? Oh, I bet. Yeah. How long did it if take? If you look at the map, you can see they made all like squares and all those squares, literally, they, they kind of connect to each other and then that's how they auto-generate. And then we can put some rules in it. For example, the towers always show up in the middle, but uh, the rest is kind of evenly distributed. Yes! Green. <laughs> I was waiting, I knew you were up there. I was like, ah, crap, hopefully this can reach. <laughs> This is cool, like... You're doing good at this. I just gotta kill Leek. Surprise Leek. Oh, Leek Kim is at the top, yeah. Yep. He's really cool. I've also gotta get better about the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I'm getting damage. blasted right now. Ooh, I don't know where Leak went. When in hey, doubt, hey, check hey. the towers. <laughs> oh, not again! No! Yes! I'm my only a pistol! That's me in front of you, buddy. <laughs> I only had so much help. I hit you quite a few times though. Yeah, I was actually watching you and um, Vince shooting each other so that I could pick the winner. <laughs> I see how it is, Thank playing you. the vulture game. <laughs> you learn a few tricks, oh, Third party. Bad. Oh, you got got by leak. So bad, sniped. The oh, game is dangerous. He's trying to, he's trying to gun me. Trying to figure out where the heck you people is. Oh, I missed. Oh, oh. oh you got got. <laughs> He came for me, that guy. That was a really? guy. You know, one thing you. about FPS that I've come to discover is, for example, Yakim is a French native speaker, right? I don't oh. think he had a conversation, a verbal conversation. But Ooh. here we are, connected, playing, having fun. That's why I love games. FPS personally. I'm gonna add the voice chat soon as well inside the game. I am shooting you in the noggin and it's doing nothing. There we go. Sheesh. You found your talent with the sniper, buddy. Ah, Link! <laughs> He's got them headshots down. He got me with a. It looks like an AK? Some sort of rifle. He's on the tower! Get him, boys! 
Yes! Thank you, I got him! <laughs> Finally! Somebody's back on the tower, oh my god. Does the tower ever end? The thing about the tower is that you need balance, because I just fell off it. So I think one thing, I don't know how hard this would be for you guys, but to prevent tower camping from really good snipers, what I would probably do is set up some sort of system that will like randomly bombard the towers with explosives or something. Interesting. That way it kind of pushes people off of towers every so often, they're forced to go out and fight. That's true. But if you also somewhat hang yourself at the tower, you're an easy target. Uh, yeah, but if you're a good top. sniper, it don't matter. In, in, in a 1v1 situation, I see that limit in what you're saying, but with people gunning at you from all angles, that's true. I don't really think you're that safe. Yeah, that because is they true. see you from every single angle, that's true. I can see that. So, what is the goal with the Web 3 side of things right now? Um, it looks like this is very Web 2. Yeah, so the, the idea is that I consistently it has to be first uh, a Web 2 fun game. And the Web 3 is going to come mostly as a support function as opposed to a primary function. And essentially, the the main uh, the ma the first right now the first aim is to uh, get NFT NFT avatars to be able to come in the game. Like with a custom login, you bring your skin essentially. Uh, and uh, the other aspect is going to be the in-game currency is going to be a uh, also a token. So the idea is that we want uh, our Web2 game to have uh, in the back end like the, the in-game currency as a token. So it means that players, they don't really have to interact with the Web3 aspect even of the token, but if they want to, mm -hmm. then it's available. Uh, one of the cool thing about the token though, is that if you buy, let's say, the in-game currency from the token perspective, once you collect your wallet, it means that you, you're you going to uh, escape 30% of the in-app purchases of the app store. Oh, nice. There's, there's a lot of cool features essentially that the that the Web3 can bring, but we do need more like anything that can support the game as opposed to make it as a main feature. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, oh, I need to get up here. Give me health. I need health. Oh no. Somebody sh Oh wow. Got killed like a joke. But one of the cool things, for example, uh, since we're going to um, do NFC, we're doing uh, NFC drops per communities, for example. Ooh. So we design custom skins uh, on different chains, right? So for example, yeah. right now we did uh, an NFC drop on Ternoa, uh, it's a layer one. Uh, next month we're going to do a, a drop on a layer one called Ultra, which is a gaming chain. And essentially what the, one of the cool aspects of that is that, let's say you play the Battle Royale, and the, the people from Ternoa with their skin can come and and the fight against the ultra team with their skin. You will be able to tell from their skin. That is neat. Oh man. I'm just trying to find also, everybody right now. Where do you bring It brings kind of a, a multi kind of multi chain aspect as well. <laughs> so there will be multi chain, which is in my opinion good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the merch chain is specifically for the NFT skins, right? So let's say whatever uh, the NFT has been minted will allow you to uh, bring uh, your NFTs in the game and we do a custom login. We just collect the metadata and we feed you the skin in the game. Wow. Thanks. Liakim is on Mr. fire, Console. right? <laughs> yeah, Liakim is dangerous. <laughs> Two of us. Have you not seen the skins? I think it's what that you check them out and we somewhat show them off the game. So Ten kills remain. I don't know how I can drop your video. <laughs> this leak guy is awesome. I'm still trying to figure out the weapons though. Um, I, so far I think the pistol is alright. I think the rifle and the sniper are definitely the meta though. <laughs> Gold sword! Gotcha! <laughs> nice. Yeah, I didn't realize that this uh, building was like a square inside. It was, and I was trying to get a grenade. 
I've never seen this building before, you realize. Okay. Someone tell Leek to chill. Generates. <laughs> it auto generates. Don't forget hey. that. Yeah, usually like they are like there's like a path, but I never saw the square ones inside. Alright, so what events or big updates do you guys have coming? So the big update is going to be the game, which is uh, the update of the game of the App Store, yeah. uh, which is the main RPG. So there's going to be three elements, which is going to be very important. The first element is going to is going to be that um, is to obviously host the main game with uh, uh, you start your journey in the meadow, and then you'll be going on from one map to the next, like literally following the story. And this has the full uh, crafting system. One By the way, our crafting main. system is the same as I don't know if you've ever played uh, Rust. The base building of Rust. So essentially, you can build your your base from scratch, and there'll be a lot of technologies to build. But one of the cool thing you can build, which is the second aspect I was going to mention, is the um, the robot. So it, the the game is really based on building robots. Uh, yeah. By the way, in the future, the robots that you build might be able to join you and help you in the battle royale as your teammates. Uh, so, for example, you build a robot, and another cool feature of the robot is that we have we are plugging to the robot ChatGPT function, Ooh. which means that instead of pressing button to control the robot, you can be able to speak to the robot. It replies to you. It remember your conversation. It will have a personality, and that will bring a lot of depth to the game. Yeah. So that's our the ChatGPT function is already working on the, on our backend. Uh, we're just going to connect to the robot and start uh, creating the ability for the ChatGPT. To control the robots One. from the speech. And uh, lastly, we 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 are we adding a dungeon system, which is also Ooh. multiplayer, but it's more like PVE uh, style. So the idea is that is is going is very similar to the um, the game uh, uh, from uh, uh, Call of Duty called uh, the you know the zombie game from Call of Duty. Ah, uh, yeah, the COD zombies. Yes, so we actually we are we are using exactly kind of the same. Uh, I'm going to create another map in Asia, and I'm going to use the the city this time. But the idea is that we 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 actually created uh, already like the 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 map and everything is already all working. So that will be added as well to 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 the game. Uh, and also we add a couple of features, so you'll be able to like buy turrets. Uh, uh, mm. This is. By, by turrets, you place them, so they will help you. So it's kind of, we've added kind of an element of tower defense. So the idea is that you don't want the the monsters uh, to come in your base, essentially. Yeah. So uh, so it's like zombies, but with a slight, uh, we're going to add a bit more of a touch of a tower defense in the game. So that you have to protect them from coming to your base. Interesting. Oh, City's already got a lot more detail going into it. Ooh. So yeah, the city uh, obviously it's a uh, design, so it's kind of uh, we can spend a lot more time really making it cool. Uh, it's not auto generated, so yeah. Here there's the minigun. I'm gonna get the minigun right now. Wow! Already found a minigun, huh? Or is it in a certain spot? Yeah, it's a kind of a certain spot. It's a bit hard to reach, but uh, if you find a minigun, then you got like a really beast gun in the game. Uh, There's lots of Gross. is health different in this map because I just got like two tapped by Leak. Um, he might. There's a if he if he does headshots. Basically, your body has different uh, box colliders on it. So if he does headshot, then probably he can kill you fast. Ah. Uh. Oh, you got me you, you with the headshot. Wait, it won't let me pick it up. Yeah, on the, hit the, the oh, handle. The handle. Yep. Okay. Yep, there's a bit of a wind up. I had a fun fact to that, buddy. What you're gunning with is a community member. <laughs> oh, no! The mini gun? Yep, that's the minigun. It was the minigun. Until Lee yeah. killed me. <laughs> Normally with the minigun, like, honestly, if you're in front of anybody, you can just, like, completely destroy everyone. But the thing is that you need to, uh, e e the armor, the, obviously, they, they defeat very fast, obviously, as well. So you have to really, uh, um, have to be pay attention to that. You can recharge. The, to recharge the minigun, is, the armors are purple. You need to catch purple armors. Ah. It's, it's the same armors than the, the snipe. 
They're using the same ammo. Okay, let me also point out something very worth noting in the game. You will see billboards, you'll see Yala Esports, you'll see Swissborg. You wanna talk a little bit about this, Vince? Sure. In game uh, advertising. Yeah, in game advertisement, but they are actually our investors to be honest. So all our investors uh, we're putting them in the in the maps uh, and so that they can have advertising, things like that. So so yeah, so a great way to show our partners. Yeah, in-game advertising without it being annoying. I downloaded a Web2 game today, and before I clicked play, geez, I watched ads. They were coming. You know? Oh, yeah, I've been and downloading just... a lot of games, and the, the ad situation's getting ridiculous. It's you know, on another level. So here we're doing it in a subtle, fun, cool way. City has billboards, right? Yeah. I don't know, I dig it. Not me over here waiting to see who's gonna pop around the corner. I'm telling you, I'm just waiting. Leak's I'm gonna like just peek out the door briefly and Leak's gonna pop me in the head because I don't know where everybody's at. Yeah, this, this map you have to learn it a little bit, but uh, there's a lot of spots in this place. I do have to say I like the jetpack. It was fun. It gives a lot of height, uh, you know, like it makes the map different. So instead of always playing like in a flat plane, usually like usual games, then you get to really get to, uh, you know, play from different styles. We have to look from every angle, essentially. I'm getting shot from somewhere. Somebody is above, but I don't know where above. <laughs> Just run. Let me tell you one fun thing about the jetpack. When you see people engaging in combat, and all of a sudden the individual pulls out their jetpack, that's another way of saying, F it, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> and I usually find it so funny. <laughs> jetpack out of there. Yeah, the jetpack is just like, yup, I'm running out of health, out. By the way, the jetpack uh, is getting redesigned as well by the community. So this jetpack is like a standard uh, like asset, but uh, very soon the jetpack will be uh, one of the made by the community. Oh, that's cool. I really love how involved you guys have gotten in the community. Like the weapons are being generated by the community now. The uh, you know you got the jetpack you're about to have the community get involved with. It's like you guys are building yeah. with the community truly, and not just saying it for Web three kudos. In the RPG game, the crafting game, all the tools are made are already made by the community as well. There's an axe, pickaxe, all of that. Oh, nice. And it's only gonna get better, buddy. It's only gonna get better. If there's Ooh. one thing I feel we're doing correctly, is we're thinking correctly. Where am I getting shot from? What the fuck? <laughs> I just got another minigun. I'm spraying you. Spraying me from where getting, though? Someone come to me and save me from this. Oh damn! I didn't make it. Did you see on, did you see on the street like the, there's money coming out of the money machines? Have you noticed? Yeah, I noticed that. I'm spraying and praying at leak. Almost had him, but chain gun's not good for distance, so at least there is a drawback. All right. Well, I mean, this is actually really cool. I, I like this map a bit more just because there's obviously more detailed. You guys put more effort into it. It's not automatically generated. Um, but what are you guys going to be adding to the uh, to the generation, do you think? Well, yeah. So, for example, uh, the gener we're going to add actually a lot of elements like here. So, um, so we're going to design much better like the different squares. Like we can put buildings. We can put like different assets, effects, things like that yeah. to just make it better. Uh, the, on the only constraint is that we need to make every kind of block uh, be able to be accessed from every angle and all yeah. that. So, yes, you know, you kind of limit what you can put on the blocks, but we're going to essentially customize much further the, each block, essentially. So you can't approach. make you can't actually for example it's not possible to make uh like a whole zone uh like you were like in the green zone for example you can't make that auto generated because yeah. this zone is too large for example uh but yeah basically what we're gonna what we're gonna do is to just customize better each block 
in a way that it's kind of more, yeah, it looks, you know, more polished, for example. Where the heck am I getting shot from now? Who gave Liakim the minigun? I have no hope now. I'm getting shot there. from all sides! <laughs> You're in the middle of the map, that's why. <laughs> Don't know where Imperin. everybody is! Imperin, the man who just joined us is our best player, as it stands. Oh. So, needs no introduction. Oh no, that's no, Sujit, please. <laughs> yeah. He'll be right on top of the situation. I can't even loot! I spawned, I we opened the box, and I died. <laughs> we should get around, we all, we're just all dead, so you, we might as well stop playing right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let's see. Lose the map like by heart, like literally. I mean, I'm kind of learning the map. Map when you start knowing it, and if you start knowing like the spawn points and stuff like that, man, he can he can spawn point hunt you. Oh, I believe I have it. No idea who gave Lea King the minigun. He's unstoppable now. Someone just jetpacked across the whole map. It sounds like Sujit looking for his time. For some dinner. Oh, I got Susan! Got Mr. Consul! What am I? <laughs> GG. This is Who's trying to get me? Alright, oh. I'm probably gonna have to wrap this Wait, up soon. You, by the way, if you press E, you can change your camera angle. Oh, yeah, I've been uh, using the heck out of that. I'm so glad you guys added that. So many games don't do that, and it's ridiculous. Ten kills remaining. It's 2023, guys. I want to swap, swap my shoulders. Oh! 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 That was close. Oh, my God, it was mine. I got sniped. The minigun, I can see, it's it's a double-edged sword. It's got lots of bullets, it shoots really fast, but the damage is definitely a bit lower. Somebody yeah, with we, good to aim. To be fair, it's, uh, the, the, um, it's supposed to have stronger bullets as well, slightly. Or oh, maybe just the amount of bullets that spits out, but it's definitely not lower. Maybe it's just the same amount, but it's just more at a time. Mm. Perrin, I've sent you a tweet we had made showcasing <laughs> our skins with Tanoa. Maybe you could play those out before we wrap it up so that you can visualize what it is that Vince was talking about. The fact is that the NFTs, the different communities are going to be in game and interoperability, multi chain login, so on and so forth. The NFT is the connect to the Web3 yeah. element. Well, um, we can definitely get that added in there for sure. Uh, did we lose Vincent? His camera's frozen. I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh, there we go. Oh, who's shooting me there? Ooh, oh, you're just he's... super focused on the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I just killed you because you were obviously an easy target trying to look at on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we can get those in there for you, Mr. Console, not a problem. Uh, but do you guys have anything that you want to share? Obviously, you got the, the mobile update that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, do you guys have any tournament events, community events? Uh, do, you, do you have like weekly game nights? Anything that you guys want to share before we start wrapping it up? So I'll let you run for that. <laughs> Yeah, I can go ahead. So typically we're running game nights almost. The community is hungry, buddy. They want a game night literally every day. Oh, I believe it. And I don't blame them because so do I. We have a lot of fun. We connect on the voice chat, tease each other, and just bond as friends. That's first and foremost. And we're running these tournaments or rather game nights every so often. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to... Hop on with their community, try this out. They are most welcome. 
Our next one, in fact, is tomorrow with TQ as well as Genso Shiki Community. The event is highlighted in our Discord. We're also running a super captains program. If you said we're building with the community, I told you not yet because <laughs> we want to completely pivot everything to be like community driven, which mm -hmm. is fun. We're working on those processes. What the super captains is essentially, they are 12 of the most dedicated, they've already proven themselves to be dedicated members who will essentially be the link between the founders and the community in terms of exchanging ideas so on and so forth what are the two things i have on top of my mind right now what about you vince yeah the, um, on my side it's going to be mainly like the 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 last the update of the game so for us it's a big it's going to be a massive milestone uh because it's essentially the like the, the the cornerstone of all the ecosystem that we're building right now and uh yes yeah, so, so we're adding a lot of things so much work uh but it's very interesting and we hope it's gonna be it's gonna be fun honestly i mean i played the rpg uh game last year i enjoyed it it was a good challenge in fact it actually got me to a point where i was like i quit i give <laughs> up i'm done yeah I remember. Uh, yeah <laughs> Did you discover the secret, the, the underneath map? Like there was an underground map. Did you discover it? I believe I did. I remember I I put together all the pieces yeah. and went into the map. Yes, and... that was it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I did do that. Um, I, so far, I yeah, mean, yeah, Jim what's up? Yeah, let me just tell him the funny story. So Jim Kirin <laughs> made it to the underground map, right? He collected all the skulls. We were on his Twitch, in fact which I think everybody should also subscribe to. And he finally got to the part where you have to jump the blocks. You remember that part? Oh, my God. Don't remind me. <laughs> Jim Kirin had reached a point where he was almost, like, raging because he'd get right near the end, mm -hmm. then, boom, falls flat to the ground. Yep. That was so funny to watch. <laughs> Sorry, much. I have to share that story. But yeah, oh, it's, it's, is that the area where it's like uh, the the Squid Game where those platform falls? I don't remember. Yeah, I remember it was it. after like th there were a bunch of platforms in this room, and you had to like jump on them to get up, and then you leave out of that area, and there were like some blocks that would like spawn through the wall or something that you had to like jump. If I remember oh, correctly. Oh, that area. Okay, that was yeah. just the beginning, man. <laughs> in the beginning. Was that was like. An hour and a half in. Well, the, to be fair, the, the the jumping level where I had to get to the top of that room that took me a while. Mr. Essentially, there, there was a there was a labyrinth. Then there's like those those platform stuff. After that, there was like uh, there's a place where there's like a, a labyrinth of um, of tubes that you have to jump on, which have oh, the wow. same tube of of Mario. And then some of them have no collider, so if you jump on the wrong one, you fall through. <laughs> and after that, there's a squid game where uh, there's like the same platform and then if you go on the wrong platform you fall through again <laughs> yeah and you start over every time oh man yeah. well it feels like you guys are on to something because both of the games that i've played i had fun uh, i'm not really a huge br person mm -hmm. so you know it is what it is but i genuinely enjoyed what you guys have brought out like it feels I don't know, even know how to explain it. It doesn't feel sweaty. Like if I jump into Warzone or Apex or something like that, like I almost feel like I have to be a try hard to play that game. But with yeah. Astro Royale, it's like I can just jump in, have fun, chill with people, get some kills. Maybe I don't, but the whole like the whole point is even when I'm losing, I'm having fun. I don't get that experience from other battle royales. So uh, I really that could like be the art style, by the way. That could be done to that. Because What's it's that? less immersive. It could be down to the art style. It's a bit more light, you know? True. Very true. But I, I enjoy it. I think you guys are on to something great. Um, so if anybody is interested in playing this game, again, go to their website, apply for the key, download Elixir, redeem your key through the Elixir launcher, and uh, jump in and play with them. So I'm going to have to be jumping in every once in a while, jump, getting in on those community nights myself. Yeah. Apparently you guys you know don't that every day yeah. but <laughs> we're doing around two with two per week with various communities and oh, almost okay. every day with our own community and 
a great way to essentially just get pinned whenever we go live is to jump on our Discord, head over to the server guide and click yes for the Super Gamers role. There you go. And whenever we go live and we add Super Gamers, you'll get the notification and you can just jump on and decompress. I also find this game to be almost my favorite game in the world at the moment because, I mean, I'm not even thinking about anything else other than laughing, teasing my friends and playing with them, you know? Talking smack. Like the trouble, yeah, the troubles <laughs> of the world disappear. And I think not only the game, but the community we're fostering is part of the success of this. I agree with that 100%. Um, I don't know. I just, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. If you're into Battle Royales, it's definitely worth checking out. So make sure you guys give it a go. Uh, any closing remarks that you guys have before I do my outro spiel? No, I think uh, I think you you read it up very well. So we we just uh, I think we, what I like to mention maybe sometimes is that in the Web three world, only few projects are actually building. <laughs> so I think we want to do. This. He said it, not me, but he's not wrong. <laughs> so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be a wrap for another exhilarating episode of The Block Sauce. But before we say goodbye, I want to give, again, a huge thank you to Mr. Consul, the voice of God on the on the video today, and uh, Mr. Vincent, the CEO behind the whole thing that's making, it, making moves. Uh, we also couldn't have done it without all of our amazing viewers and supporters. Your engagement and passion fuel our drive to bring you the hottest topics and thought-provoking conversations week after week. And we're always trying to find the latest games, get a little get a little showcase going for them because I feel like the projects could use the help, right? Right? Yeah. Eyes, free marketing. Nobody's going to complain about free marketing. <laughs> Come on and try, play, build with us. You know, we actually get, there's a spot for everybody in Astromas. Exactly. Go join them and maybe you'll be able to design your own game gun for the game. Ah, that'd be neat. Yeah. But... Uh, remember, the sauce never stops flowing. Stay connected with us on social medias, LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you can find ReNFT, we are there, uh, including threads now for those that missed the, the whole threads wave. And you're always able to suggest future gaming and Web3 topics if, if you want us to tackle any. Uh, we're always trying to, you know, cater to you guys and give you guys a voice within the space. Web3 ethos, you know, this is just as much your show as it is ours. Kind of. <laughs> so that's going to be it for today, Sauce Enthusiasts. Join us next time for another thrilling episode of The Block Sauce, where we'll keep the gaming flame alive and the discussion sizzling. Stay saucy and keep gaming in the exciting realm of Web3. Have a good one. Peace. Salute.